Hello, everybody. Give me a minute. <clears throat> Get myself situated here. Hope you can see this map. I'm testing my mic, by the way. Hello, everybody. Give okay. Give me a minute. <clears throat> Get myself situated here. Good. The mic works. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to let y'all look at this map here because this map is very important as it pertains to what we want to talk about tonight. Um, this is just a small... Uh, I did a preview yesterday of the wars that will happen in the last day, okay? If my head is cut off, you know, that's just the way it is. I, because I want you to see all of the map, so my head might be a little cut off because what I did was I had to zoom this camera in so that you can see the map here. Uh, and um, you might see some shade here and there, but when I put a spotlight on it, unfortunately, it's too bright and I don't want that. So this is the best we can do until we can you know, get it to a place where we feel comfortable. Uh, I hope you can see this here. For those of you who are on Facebook right now, go ahead and hit the share button uh, as we give you uh, a recount of, a recap that is, we're not voting, of what we did yesterday. This right here is God's attention right here, this map that you see here, okay? Now, please understand, We've got the United States over here on the west, and the United States is also over there on the east. Why? Because somebody told us one day that the world ain't flat, it's round. So the, you keep traveling down the, uh, the Atlantic, you're going to eventually wind up where the Pacific is. That's what they told me. And I don't know if somebody lied to me. That's why it was so easy for those in the east, uh, the Asian, the, the Japanese, they, when they were flying their... Uh, kamikazes, or I guess what you call those planes, or those those pilots, all right, suicide guys, they hit the Pacific, all right, that's over there, California's over there, y'all, <laughs> okay, but God's attention in end time is this map right here, you got all of the continent of Africa here, now this is the best that I could draw up, I'm not a uh, I'm not the greatest at drawing up stuff, but one thing that I did love when I was a young boy was to look at maps. I examined the maps and tried to figure out where are these territories that I'm hearing on my television screen. Okay, so at the back of our Bibles, a lot of times, uh, what uh, if you got a good study Bible, in the back of the Bible is usually our maps, all right? If you got a good study Bible, and I would look through the maps in my Bible and find these territories that, again, that I would hear on the TV back in the 1970s and early 80s, all right? So the, the, this territory here, uh, the territory of Africa, of course, up in Turkey, very important. Russia is very important, of course, in all of the Persian Gulf, all right? And then there are some other territories over here that we don't hear about but the Antichrist is going to use, okay, because they're of the population of Muslims, okay? This whole situation here is all about the Muslim people and the Jews. Hear me. The whole end time structure and end time prophecy is all about Muslims and Jews. This is Ishmael and Isaac, all right? And some of this maybe up in the peninsula, up, up here in Jerusalem, and, and uh, some of the border states could be Jacob and Esau. All right? I'm hoping that that's making sense for some of you. So I want to recap from yesterday. Uh, I did a lot yesterday, so I don't really have to go long today. I gave you guys Bible scriptures so that you can kind of read for yourself to see what we mean here. For instance, we talked about the Battle of Armageddon. I told you all that's not really a battle. Okay, we'll talk about why I said that. Um, now, the border, the states that this pr current president, um, at the time of this recording, um, President uh, Trump just um, decided to pick a Supreme Court justice. Now, he's got to go through the process, all right? Um, his name is Judge Neil uh, Gorsuch, okay? He's the 10th Circus Court of Appeals. I think George Bush is the one who got him in there. Now, he's kind of pro-life. We don't really know. There is a hint of him being pro-life. It is assumed, okay, let's put it that way, that he is because of 
because of um, his track record of doing things and uh, his his uh, the things that he have spoken or have not spoken on as it pertains to this this um, this this abortion thing. Uh, we we're going to find more out about him, but I will say that I believe that the Democrats are going to give him a very difficult time. And the reason why they're going to give him, give him a difficult time, it's not about how good of a man he is. It's not about if they agree with his policies. It's really a payback. Uh, because when President Barack Obama um, put up a, a young man, well, not so young, but a brother, um, they said a, a, a lame duck president should not have the right to choose the next Supreme Court justice. And so they gave him a heart. They, they wouldn't even give him a time on the microphone. That's just the way it is, all right? Fast forward almost one year, almost a year today, uh, Justice Scalia died just suddenly, and it took a whole year for us to get the ninth guy on, on, the, on the bench, okay? So they're going to give this Judge Neal a very difficult time. So let's pray for the process, okay? So far, I actually like ju just Judge Neal Gorsuch from what I've been reading, what I've been seeing on television and reading and uh, he's got a big write-up on Wikipedia, so go ahead and research that for yourself, okay? Please, people, do the homework. Uh, Judge Neil, N-E-I-L, Gorsuch, uh, G-O-R-S-U-C-H, all right? Turn off Olivia Pope and, uh, and basketball wives. I know I keep bringing that up. Turn off all that stuff and go to the news and pay attention. All right, blessings to you, Lady Michelle. Blessings to you, Maurice, uh, Elder uh, Gregory. Uh, Vicky Hecker is here. Okay. All right. So this is, this is, this is very important. <clears throat> what you see happening on the big screen with our president. All right. Pay close attention to what he is implementing because it could affect all of this. Now God has his hands on the man because the heart of the King is in God's hands. So don't be going crazy on that man. God have allowed this to happen and let this man do what he do. And if you're against something, then go against it democratically with your votes. Nevertheless, keep watching him like I watched Barack Obama for eight years. All right. Okay. Um, so I want to give you a precursor. Hey, Coco, blessings to you. Hey, Elder McGee, uh, blessings to you as well. Uh, here are the seven nations that President, um, President Donald Trump put a ban on. Now, this is a Muslim ban. I need you to know that. This is a direct Muslim ban. I don't care what else his administration say. I don't care what his press secretary say. Secretary say, out of his own mouth, the president said, this is not a, a Muslim ban. And then, almost in the same sentence, he says, it's a ban. All right, really, that's what it is, okay? Uh, we have uh, Iraq, of course, is on the ban. It's right here uh, above the Persian Gulf. All right, Iraq, uh, of course, uh, Syria was also on the ban. All right, so all these are next door to each other. Iraq, Syria, Iran is on the ban. Uh, Yemen is on the ban, and Libya is on the ban, and I believe uh, Sudan is on the ban, right? And Somalia is on the ban. And we gave, we told you the names of these uh, territories. We talked about. Um, the different names that were changed. Iran, of course, is the Persian, uh, Iraq, Persian Gulf. We talked about the, this is Mesopotamia. You'll see that in scripture. Okay. But it's re renamed Turkey. Okay. I think they changed the name. Iran in 1935, uh, from the Persia, the uh, Medo Persia. All right. And then we see maybe Kush down here and on and on. We talked about that yesterday. We also talked about uh, the war of Gog and Magog. There will be two wars, Gog and Magog. <clears throat> Exodus uh, chapter 38 and 39. I told you guys to read that. Let me see if I can get that right. Uh, no, I'm sorry, did I say, I'm, I meant to say Ezekiel. <clears throat> 38 says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, uh, set thy face against Gog. All right, up in here. Gog, the land of Magog. Now, Magog is right up in here. That's Russia, by the way. That's where you, there's a little battle that was going on in Georgia. Remember that about, about two, three years ago in Georgia? That's right there in, in Russia. Well, that's Magog. <clears throat> okay. And the chief priest of Meshach. Okay, Meshach is in Assyria, which is right here in Turkey. Uh, Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against, against him. 
All right. That's what the word of God didn't say prophesy to him, but prophesy against him. All right. Uh, and say, thus said the Lord God, behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince, prince of Meshach. Now, before you read chapter 38, I think it's very important to read chapter 37 because this talks about the dry bones. Okay. Uh, coming back together. And the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. All right. And what the Bible did was give you this, this depiction of these bones being dried up and laying there uh, and the sinews coming off. It says, and I will lay sinews upon you. It talked about how God's going to take the flesh and put it back on the bones. And we didn't understand who this was. Uh, and then, so what happened was the Christians uh, during my time began to come up with this theology, uh, what they call this thing where replacement, they call it replacement theology. All right. You might want to study that replacement theology. And what it does is it tells you, if you take the word Israel in the Bible, replace that, uh, with Gentile or replace that with Christian or something like that. Okay. Replacement theology is dangerous. It should not be taught. Uh, because what happens is what it does is it places the Gentile or the Christian or us, the church. That's what it is. Replacement theology is meaning to replace the word, the, the term uh, Israel, the word Israel with the church. Dangerous teaching. Because if we're going to do that, then we in chapter 37 of Ezekiel, then we'd have to replace Israel with church. And we ain't no dry bones because that's what the dry bones were all about. So I prophesied as I was commanded and I, as I prophesied, there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together bone to bone. Okay. And when I beheld lo, the sinews and the flesh came on the bones and it talks about all this stuff. So I prophesied, uh, as he commanded me and the, and the breath came back into these bones, man, it's just a great story. I need you to understand it. And someone asked the question, well, who is this? And the Bible says, this is the whole house of Israel the children of Israel that ain't the church. Okay. That's why that theology replacement theology is dangerous. All right. So there, there is the players right there. Okay. So we talked about the, the, the war of Gog, Magog, all right. Tubal and Rosh and Meshach. Well, the war, again, I talked about that, that particular war may happen while we're still alive. All right. It's a very, it's a terrible war. It's so destructive. It's, it is, it, it, it almost annihilates. I mean, gosh, there are 1 billion people, Christians. That is there are 1 billion Christians, uh, that I think of these, it's probably about 1.5 now, a little bit more than that, that are on the earth. And then the rest of these people, of course, uh, they're, they're Muslim and then they're, they're uh, middle Eastern and what, and then some of them are now, okay. They're all over the place, but there's a lot. So when this war happens, one and a half billion people will be wiped off the face of the earth. That's just an, a devastating thing. Okay. But the war of Gog and Magog will not occur until the people of Israel are living securely in unwalled villages. That's in Ezekiel 38. Well, here's Israel. This is the center of God's attention. Oh man. I'll keep saying it all night long. This little piece of land right here, right there, small. You can't even hardly find it on the map. If you don't know anything about geography, hard to find it on the map, but look at all these territories right here surrounding it. God, I believe strategically placed Israel there because it's the center of the world. All right. In God's eyes, it's the center of the world. And then he had the people spread all out around this place because it would be easier for God to be a general of an army and take his, take these people, even though these people will be enemies of God and surround them like a wagon train, like the Indians did a wagon train. That's a wagon train in God's eyes. And these are the, the Indians, I guess you can say back in the roaring, back in the 17, 1800s. Okay. And all of these nations will be coming against Israel. All right. We'll talk more about that as we get further into the book of uh, revelation. Okay. Some believe that this war won't begin until after the first part of the tribulation, when the antichrist will sign a peace treaty with Israel and say, I I'm coming here to help y'all out. See, when y'all was talking about 
certain people being the antichrist, it makes no sense. Donald Trump president can't, he can't be the antichrist because first of all, we don't believe he's coming from the America. He's coming from a European area. Some people say Spain. Some people say he's a Muslim. Okay. On and on. And we can, we can bring out the scenarios there, but he don't fit an antichrist type person because the antichrist, believe it or not, going to be well loved by many people. He's going to solve everybody's problems. He's going to bring this, he's going to come in, in peace and he's just going to be a dynamic dude. And that's why they thought that president Barack Obama was that man. All right. Okay. I hope I'm not confusing y'all. <clears throat> Hello, Sylvia. Blessings to you. Okay. Uh, but he can't, I don't believe that the, 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 the war of Gog and Magog is going to happen during the tribulation uh, because um, if you look further in scripture, um, there is something that will happen um, during this war in the Gog and Magog. The destruction is going to be so vast. Blood is going to be so high that it's going to, whether you know how a horse mane is, the blood is going to rise up to where the horse's mane is. I mean, that's how much blood and destruction will happen. And the, and the Bible says it's going to take them seven years to, to gather up the weapons and burn them. All right. Well, seven years. Well, apparently they must be back into their land in order for that to happen. That's why I don't believe that the Gog and Magog war will happen during the tribulation. I believe it's going to happen before which means it could happen during our time or before, right after we leave this here earth. All right. If y'all believe in the rapture, then amen. Israel was born like this. And I gave you all that scripture yesterday. Israel was just bam. Isaiah 66 and eight. Who has ever seen anything as strange as this? This is what Isaiah 66 and eight says. Whoever heard of such a thing, has a nation ever been born in one day? Has a country ever come forth in just boop, one mere moment? But by the time Jerusalem's birth pains again or began, her children was born. Israel popped up on the scene. Now these nations were already here. God had had these people removed out right of their territory. Jerusalem, God gave them an ultimatum. He says, if you do good, if you do this, I'll bless you. But if you do this, I'm going to curse you. Well, Israel kept doing this and then they kept doing that. And then he allowed God allowed these territories to enslave. Well, you see what happened in Greece. Okay. You see what happened in, in over here in Iraq, Nebuchadnezzar and Nimrod and all these other, you, okay. Uh, th these little territories here kept trying to enslave Israel and they were successful at it. All right. So then 1948, 49, Israel was born in one day and then they entered into many wars. Israel was born into warfare. <clears throat> How you know? I gave you all the 11 wars from yesterday. The Indi War of Independence in 1948, the Suez War, 1956. Then came the Six Day War and all these are within their borders in 1967. They keep winning these wars. The War of Attrition, 1967. The Yom Kippur War, 1973. The Lebanese War, 1982. The First Arab Intifada War uh, in, let's see, 1987. Uh, the, the first Gulf War over here, uh, that happened in 1991 when President Bush was in office. Remember that? And we went over there to Operation Desert Storm, right over here. Operation Desert Storm, uh, the second Arab Intifada happened in the year 2000 uh, when we were fighting over the Boer v. Uh, Gore situation and everybody went voting, but we didn't know who was going to be a president until weeks later. Remember that? Mm -hmm, that was in 2000 while you, our brothers and sisters were in a war. The Hezbollah a war happened in 2006 with this little land right here. And of course, 2008, not too long ago, the war of Hamas. Okay. Not, not Hummus, but Hamas. <laughs> okay. Or Hamas that that's them. All right. All these wars broke out. Trust me, probably before I blink another eye up oh, there, it is another war will break out. Okay. Now, why is it that this nation continued goes into war with other nations because they, they try to attack them, but yet they come out unscathed in many cases. Well, Israel is a power force. It's a force to be reckoned. And God himself said, I got to protect you. You, my people, God won't let his people be wiped out. Even the Holocaust came. And what God did was he sent both the hunter 
and he sent the fishermen. Okay, you go into scripture. Oh man, where's that? Is that Jeremiah? I've got to find that. I got to find that. Lord have mercy. I'm gonna, where was that? Where was that? God says, I'm going to send first the fishermen, and he's going to fish the pe the children of Israel out. Okay, and if they don't come out, then he says, I'm going to send the hunter. Woo wee. And then the hunter's going to come and he's going to hunt you out. Well, many people think that the Adolf Hitler was one of them. The Adolf Hitler would be the, the hunter. Okay. All right. So that's another story. I can go into that thing at some other time. All right. The nations mentioned in the Bible will go against Israel. Okay. The Gog, Magog, Meshach. I mentioned all of those things. Okay. But now watch this. Here are. Now, Russia plays an important part in this war. Keep your eye, like I told y'all yesterday, keep your eye focused on Russia. Now, he up there hiding in, up there in the north, okay? Now, he's not direct north. The Bible talks about the, the, the cities in the north, okay? So that would, of course, be, that would be Syria, all right? And kind of, well, Lebanon is up there, but mostly the, the territory of Turkey, the nations of the north and then of the south is, is Egypt, which is heavily Muslim, by the way. Okay. <clears throat> but Russia, oh, Putin, and whoever's going to be in the office around that time, he's sitting back just waiting because these Arab nations, and I'll tell you who they are, are allies to Russia. They love Russia. Sitting at their top like daddy, waiting like a chess game. And God has got his hands on Russia. God got his hands on Putin and whoever else is going to be in there after Putin. All right. God is, is, is moving his hand. All right. And God is doing this. All right. Your, your turn. All right. Your turn. All right. He's doing, he's going to be doing that with Russia. And I'll tell you why. Um, the, let's see here. So you've got these allies, you got Libya. Okay. Over here, you got Iran, you've got Sudan, uh, and you've got Turkey, okay? All of these are allies of Russia, all right? So keep your eye on Libya. They are, they are chum, they chum up. Israel, Iran, you know, Iran don't like us. They hate us. The reason why they hate us because we are the lovers of the Jews. And you have to turn to um, Psalm right here. If you turn to Psalms uh, 83, Okay, I'm a dignitad. I mentioned yesterday that man said something that was kind of scary to a lot of us who understood Bible prophecy. All right, uh, right here in verse four, he says, "They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance." I'm a dignitad. Said that out of his own mouth. He wants Israel wiped out. Well, if Iran is an ally of Russia. Well, if Iran want them wiped out, guess what Russia want as well? Guess what Libya want as well? You, you see what's going on here? Keep your eyes on those key lands because they're the ones that are after Israel. And that's why I said, please pray for the president of the United States because you don't want him or Congress to pull back their support of Israel. Something will happen. Marva, what are you saying here? Jeremiah 16, 16. Thank you. Um, Co-Pastor Tony says that you are talking good, uh, informing the people. This is what, yes, we got, yes, Co-Pastor, thank you. You may not remember President Trump said his son-in-law was Jewish and he was going to make peace in Israel. Yep, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Really, it's a business interest. Uh, these territories that President uh, Trump decided to ban from coming over here, I mentioned again, Libya, uh, of course, uh, Somalia, Sudan, S Syria, Iraq, Iran, Yemen. He don't have any business dealings in there. Why wasn't Saudi Arabia on the list when many of those who came over here to bomb us on 911 came from Saudi Arabia? The UAE came from there. What happened to that? What's going on with Pakistan? Why weren't they on the list? I mean, you know, just that's just the way it is in uh, this country of ours. All right. So that's Psalm 83. Pay close attention to Psalm 83 because Psalm 83, what happens is these territories right within the borders are going to go against Israel to wipe them out. All right. I said it and I said it again today. Okay. So here are the nine wars in the end time that we will see happen. 
The first one, as again, the war of uh, Israel's uh, extermination. I just mentioned that in Psalms 83. Israel will eventually destroy Damascus right up in here as written in Isaiah chapter 17. Okay. And Jeremiah chapter 49. All right. Now here goes what's called the inner ring. I'm going to call this the inner ring here. All right. The inner ring destruction. That's Iran. That's Syria. That's Jordan. That's Egypt. And then that's Gaza. Okay. Remember we talked about Gaza, Gaza, uh, the Palestinian area there. Uh, sometimes we call it the Gaza Strip. And I believe the Gaza is where Philistia is. And that's also the land where the Philistines were. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got uh, so many maps I have. Some of them uh, are old and some of them are new. And I guess I would have to, uh, maybe I could, can I show you all this map here? I don't know if y'all can see this map here. This is a good one here. Um, I don't know how close I can get to where, where the camera is, but that's a good map right there. Okay, there's Mesopotamia. Uh, there's Damascus. No, uh, let's see. I don't know if it's sh the shady, but there's Damascus right there. Okay, there's Egypt, and all of this is Israel. Okay, all right. You take a snapshot of it. Uh, my book was up too far. Okay, so Isaiah 1749. That's the war of ex to exterminate Israel. The second war is the first Gog and Magog war. That's going to happen. Uh, and I mentioned that in detail, Ezekiel 38. That's Russia and its Muslim allies will go against Israel. The allies will cry out to Russia for help. Uh, and they will oblige because all Russia want, all Russia want their interest in this war is what President Trump wants. And what do President Trump wants, everybody? Hunt class, what does he want? He wants the oil. He keeps saying it. He said it on his campaign. He said, take the oil. Why is he seem to be buddying up with Putin of Russia? Because Russia wants oil rich territories okay and God continues to keep keeping that place right there they keep winning when you want to be a part or when you want to overtake a territory that keeps winning no matter how small they are they keep winning must be something about them oil rich all right so Russia wants that oil and he the and Putin will oblige to these territories going against Israel because of the oil all right I'm hoping I'm hoping y'all are still there Okay. All right. So that's the allies of, uh, you got to go to Ezekiel 38 and 12. That's really what it says. Why don't we see if we can find that Ezekiel? what I say? What I tell me what I say. Ezekiel 30, 38 and 12. Here's proof. It says in 11, and thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. The walls will be tearing down and they seem like they're going to be in some peace. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely. -wee. See, I believe the Antichrist may have something to do with this. He's going to sign a peace treaty with them. Safety at all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. Them, them walls are coming down uh, to take a spoil and to take a prey to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. Russia. Yeah, they're coming for the oil coming for the goods because uh, Israel's walls have come down, not so much because of destruction, because they don't need it. They're in safety now, oh, man. I hope I'm helping y'all out with that. Mm -hmm. So that that's the inner circle here. Well, let's talk about the outer ring. The outer ring <clears throat> is the destruction of Turkey. They're going to come against them. Of course, Iran again, Iraq, then believe it or not, way down here, Sudan, 
and then Libya, and then Algeria. All right, these boys are right next door to each other, and and uh, I think the next one is uh, Tunisia. I think it's Tunisia. All right, so all these territories here, almost right next to, door to each other. Turkey, of course, gonna come against. Israel from the outer rings. You got the inner rings here, and then the outer territories, then they're going to come against Israel. All right? That's the second war. Uh, that's the uh, second war, which is uh, Gog and Magog. Number three, <clears throat> this third war that's going to happen in the last day is the convention, uh, the conventional war of the tribulation. You have to go to Revelation chapter six. I haven't read that in a while, but this is called the seal, it's the great seal, the first seal, second seal, third seal, fourth seal, fifth seal, sixth seal. Okay. Uh, and it leads, Ooh, it gets bad, y'all. And I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals, y'all know who the lamb is. And I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come, come and see. And I saw the, and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Uh, I know many people who think that this is the second coming of Christ, but not so. Okay, this event will happen a couple times, believe it or not. All right, now this war happens because then the second seal is opened. And when he opened the second seal, I heard the second beast saying, come here. And there, uh, and there went one, I'm sorry. And there went out another horse that was red and power was given to him that sat there on to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword again, this is not a Christ second coming situation. But after this happens, one and a half billion people will die. Oh my God. It's going to be the worst thing you had ever seen in your life. Hopefully you will never see this. Yeah. Yes. Learning so much. Amen. We're, we're, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Erica, we says, I will finish watching this one. It posts. All right. Blessings to you. Garcia. Okay. So the first war that's coming, hopefully we're gone is the extermination war of Psalms 83. The second war is Gog and Magog. The third war is the conventional war during the tribulation. This fourth war is the war, uh, the nuclear war that is of the tribulation. The nuclear war of the tribulation, you have to go to Revelation chapter eight and Revelation chapter nine. Man, we're going to Revelation fast, ain't we? And we'll go back and do it in detail. Revelation eight and Revelation nine. This is called the more seals the seventh seal. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was a silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. That means everything before chapter eight will be so destructive that even heaven himself, us, we up there too. We're going to be up there partying and eating like what just happened? Kaboom. I mean, I heard this kaboom when the new year came in, I just saw this kaboom right here in the, in uh, America. The other day I was looking at the shores, the city, the lakefront of Chicago, and I saw a tsunami. Lake Michigan, don't know tsunamis, tsunamis happen here, okay? Nowhere in America that I know of other than Japan, all right? And this tsunami, Lake Michigan came. And usually some tsunamis come because of the 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 the, the, the plates uh, shift because of some hurricane or something like that, and that water came like one of these uh, blockbuster movies and came and hit the shore of uh, Chicago and and overtake overtook those skyscrapers we see downtown Chicago. That was a vision I just saw just the other day, and it freaked me out. And I immediately went right, right into prayer. Well, they're gonna be silent. They're gonna be like, wow. What happened down there on the earth? Uh, it says, and I saw the seven angels which stood before God and to them were given seven trumpets and another angel came and stood at the altar having a gold uh, censer. Uh, uh, that's C-E-N-S-E-R, censer. And there was given to him much incense and that he should offer 
it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And they're in heaven, and they're seeing this stuff go on. That's in the seventh seal. And then, the, then, then come in the trumpets, the first, the second trumpet, the third trumpet, and the fourth trumpet. And then in chapter 9 comes the fifth trumpet. But check this out. Because you have to read chapter 8 and 9 together, all the way up into six trumpets. All right, so these seals and these trumpets are happening. Again, we're going to go into Revelation in more detail. But this nuclear war, that's what happened. Kaboom! And those in heaven said, what is that? And they were silent. See, when you get to chapter 4, all you see is them doing holy. They're just crying. Holy, holy, holy. And the... the uh, the elders are up there, and they just and they just just worshiping God. And then, by the time you get to chapter eight, boom! Quiet in heaven. That's how powerful it's going to be. And this is into the tribulation. I don't even know if it's the great tribulation just yet. Okay, one third of the earth will be wiped out from that boom. That means another billion and a half people will die. <laughs> That's a lot of people, people. That's a lot of people, people. You realize there's about 7 billion people on the earth? So I already knocked out about 3 billion people. Remember, the war of God and make God going to take out about a billion and a half. And this war, this nuclear war, is going to take out another billion and a half. 3 billion people. That's half of the earth wiped out because of nuclear war. When y'all keep hearing about uh, these nuclear, uh, they, 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 look who is that? North Korea. You know, I mentioned I did that little analogy with them. They're going, pfft. They, do, they, they shoot their little bullets over here, pfft, no career, and then pfft, it goes right into the river. Well, don't take them for granted, all right? God will, can, he can, if he wants to, make that, that man a very powerful man, and they're going to have this uh, enriched uh, utonium or, or the atoms and what have you, where they'll be able to sh pfft, shoot that sucker so far, they're just going to come over here, well, maybe... And most of in the Pacific and reach California, okay, if you're not careful. So don't think, all right, when do you estimate this will happen, Lamarla? Uh, now, when do I estimate what's going to happen? Uh, because if you're talking about end time, you got to be careful. Because what Christ said is, you don't know the day nor the hour. But what he did do on the mount in, in around Matthew all right, 24, something like that. He began to give us hints that he says, you may not know when, but uh, the day, you're not going to know the hour, but you're going to know when it's coming near. All right. So he began to tell, he began to give y'all clues. All right. And some of these clues have been happening for a long time, but they, but then he says, these birth pains are becoming more and more and more. You're talking about chapter 8 and 9. That's the tribulation. We're already gone, Lamarla. So you can't set the clock until after the rapture. That's when you have to set the clock. And not just after the rapture. A peace treaty has to be signed with uh, the Antichrist with Israel. Okay? And you got to understand that what's, what Lucifer, what Satan is doing is he's trying to set up an unholy trinity. So we have the Father, we have the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, Satan have, um, well, you got Satan. He would be like the Father. Uh, and then you've got the false prophet. All uh, right? Yeah, the false prophet. And then you have the Antichrist. Get that? That is Satan's unholy trinity. Christ comes from the tribe of Judah. He is a roaring lion. Satan comes. He counterfeits like Judah. He comes as a roaring lion. Okay? And when he comes, he's going to do miraculous works through the Antichrist and, of course, through his prophet. You see what I'm saying? King uh, in the kingdom in the Old Testament, see, the Jews understand this because they understood the whole setup uh, uh, of uh, God's kingdom. You had the king, you had the uh, prophet, and you had the priests. All of them had a place. They, they, they're the ones that ruled the kingdom well. All right? Satan would be at the top. Then you have the priest. Okay? He would serve as the priest. And he would serve as the prophet. Okay? And they're going to do some work, some really 
amazing things in, old t in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Revelation that we'll bring out a little bit more. Okay, so that's the war of tribulation. I'm sorry, that's the nuclear war, Revelation 8 and 9. Don't fear. You won't be here to witness any of that. Remember, I read 8 and I said that heaven was quiet. Well, that's because you, you up there. <laughs> so where you at? Lamarla, that's you. You in heaven wondering, what is that? Kaboom, what is that? All right, so that's number, what war is that? That's the fourth war. The fifth war is the war in the heavens. Revelation chapter 12. Oh, yeah. Revelation chapter 12. Okay. And I just want y'all to know that you, you can't really read Revelation chronological because it won't make much sense to you. You're going to have to flip back and forth. That's just the way it is. All right. So I'm just, uh, I'm sorry to tell y'all that. 12, Revelation, Revelation chapter 12, the woman. Mm-hmm. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven and uh, a woman clothed with the sun, S-U-N, and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Now this sounds like Joseph. Uh, and she, I'm not saying this is Joseph, but, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. That sounds like something that I just referred to earlier and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his okay and I'm gonna go here this right here I, I gotta go see when I do my I can't wait to get back get deeper into Revelation but when you get to chapter 7 it talks about the war in heaven and there was war in heaven Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels Y'all remember in the beginning where Jesus was saying, I see Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Y'all remember that? And you also remember going back where um, it talked about how Lucifer got puffed up and uh, he wanted to be like God. And then the, and, and God kicked him out of heaven with the third of the angels. Remember that? Okay. Well, he knocked him from the third. See, there's three heavens. There's the, the first, the second, and the third. We're like, well, how do you know? Well, because the Apostle Paul, remember, he was in the, he was, knocked out in a vision. Some people say he was stoned, okay, meaning somebody they tried to kill him, so they stoned him and he was unconscious and he got caught up into the third heaven. Well, if there is a third heaven, ipso facto, logic tells me there's a second and a first. Now, but you got to understand how scripture takes words and uses them. Heavens just simply means the boundaries, all right? All right, because the, the sky would be a heaven. I think they call it a uh, Man, what what is it? I have to find it. The who is it? The Mormons have a name. Uh, it's like the uh, it's like the stratosphere, the hemisphere, and things like that. All right, y'all know the three that I'm looking for. I know you do. I'm just got to remember what that is. It'll come to me probably before the show is over. Okay, the heavens, the sky is one heaven. The universe is the second heaven, and where God dwells is the is the next one. Uh, what is that? What is that? It'll come to me. Okay. And one of y'all gonna put it there. I know you will. So which, which war is this? This is uh, the war in the heavens, Revelation chapter 12. Now watch this. Here's what y'all always say in church. Uh, you you got to testify <laughs> in church you, because you overcome by the word of your testimony and by the blood of the lamb. Well, if somebody else do that, in church, ask them where that come from, because most folk don't even know where that come from. Well, here's where it comes from, right here. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Satan is the accuser of the brother and he accuses you. Every time you mess up, every time you sin, every time you just fall, okay? Satan says, see? See what Shant Shantae did? See what Natalie did? See what Lamarla did? See? He accuses him. And what God does is he looks over to his right. He sees Christ sitting there and says, is, is, is Sir Walter worthy? And Christ says, yes, he is. <laughs> you see, your prayers, you know, they're like, Filthy rags, your righteousness, they're really like filthy rags to God. 
you know. But so what God does is he looks at the sacrifice and then he counts you worthy. Man, I went there. Mm -hmm. I did. He counts you worthy. So verse 11 says, and they overcame him. So we, we keep quoting it, but we never finish it. Not you overcome. They overcome him. By the blood of the lamb, like God does. He look over at the blood, Christ, and say, is she worthy? Mm -hmm. So Satan is accusing me of something to God. And God says, okay, Christ, what's going on? They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the, by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Oh, I hope this is making sense. Mm-hmm. That's shouting material. I know Natalie. That's what I'm saying. So those of you who always gotten somebody accusing you of something, if you ain't do nothing, these false accusers, just be quiet, be silent. Cause God is in heaven looking over at his son. Did she, she didn't do that. Did she? No, she, I know she didn't do it. I died for her. I know she, Oh, okay. Well, Lucifer, you ain't got nothing to say to me. <laughs> Y'all like, well, I thought he got kicked out of heaven. He did. He got kicked out of third heaven. But remember reading in the book of Job, while God was having a business meeting uh, with the children of, of, of God, that's the angels. And guess who popped up? Satan popped up. There he was. So like, I thought he got kicked out. Well, Satan still, he's called the prince of the power of the air. He still got reign over the heavenly bodies. Okay. And God will restrain him as he will. And so there he is in the book of Job. Again, if he got kicked out, then apparently God must be somewhere with the children of, of, of God, the angels. And there he is. And God, and God says, well, what are you doing? Well, I'm down there on the earth, uh, uh, creating havoc. Okay. And well, you know what God says? Well, Job down there, did you, did you knock on his door? Did you ring his bell? Have you considered my servant Job? Mm -hmm. And here's what, here's the further proof of what we just read. You know what Lucifer's reply was? Satan's reply was, you got a, a shield around that boy. <laughs> you can't, I can't touch him. You see, that's the whole thing. Y'all worried about what the devil, y'all worried about your enemies, what have you, but God has a force around you. If you, if you love him, if you keep his commandments, then he's got a shield around you. So can't the Satan can't touch you. Cancer can't touch you. Uh, lupus can't touch you. And if it do, God will just allow this for, for a season so that you can have a testimony and the others will have a testimony because he's going to use your mouth to say, look what God did for me. Uh, they overcame him. I mean, how did I get into that? I don't know how I got into that right there. I just don't know how I got into that, but I, I I'm in it now. All right. So that's the war in the heavens. Revelation chapter 12, the war against the Jews and the saints. That's the next war that's going to happen. The war against the Jews and the saints will happen also in Revelation chapter 12. OK, uh, then the seventh war will be the Middle East campaign of the Antichrist. You got to go to Daniel's chapter 11. I think I was talking about that. Uh, Daniel 11 mm, and what and four, I think, I think I gave that to you guys. Yeah. And a mighty King shall stand up and shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. This is the antichrist. Okay. Now this is the rule, the rule of Greece. That's what's going on over here. Let me back it up. I'll go to chapter 11, verse one. Uh, it may be the East coast that will get hit first. Phyllis is saying, uh, the water will come as far as the mountains in the East. Next, the West coast USA will be judged. Oh, absolutely. USA will be judged. Now you got to give a scripture here because if you're reading scripture, then you've got to go to, uh, this territory because you're not going to find the United States coasts, uh, in scripture. I just need you to know that. Good evening, Al Washington. Blessings to you. That's my news, man. Tune in tomorrow at five o'clock. Uh, the rule of Persia. Okay. Now here's the rule of Persia. Okay. Cause we keep talking about the United States. Uh, the, the antichrist is coming. No, here goes the rule of Persia, Daniel chapter 11. And I, in the first year of Darius, the Mead, remember I've talked about Mede or Medo Persia. Uh-huh. Even I stood to confirm and 
to strengthen him. And now will I show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all. And by his strength, through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of Grecia or Greece. He's going to be extremely wealthy. Donald Trump is wealthy with his friends. He put in the office. These are billionaires, but don't worry about them. They just little lambs compared to what's getting ready to come. And a mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. And when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken and shall be divided towards the four winds of heaven and not to his posterity, nor according to his dominion, which he ruled for his kingdom shall be plucked up even for others beside those. And the king of the south shall be strong and one of his princes and be shall be uh, strong upon him and have dominion. His dominion shall be a great dominion. Man, it goes deeper and deeper and deeper. I mean, that thing goes on for another 35 verses. Okay. And then it talks about the prophecy of the willful kings. Okay. Daniel is deep. And I think you should pay close attention to what Daniel is saying because that Daniel talks about the kings from the top of uh, this statue was there. I, I just can't, I ain't got time. And it talked about the, the great, the, the gold and the silver and the brass and the feet of clay and, clay and all that stuff. That's just talking about the kingdoms of that time. I don't have time to go into the teaching of Daniel. So I don't know why y'all got me, y'all pushing me into that. Okay. The, so we're in war. We at the, the war number seven, the Middle East campaign of the Antichrist. War number eight. This is called the Battle of Armageddon. You got to go to the book of Joel, chapter 3. You got to go to Zechariah, chapter 14. I went to Zechariah in depth. Okay, yesterday, day before, I can't even remember now. Zechariah, chapter 14. I went into there in depth uh, because I was talking about another subject. And then I went into Zechariah, chapter 14. And I talked about the flesh falling off of people's bones. Well, and then the battle of Armageddon, you got to go to Revelation chapter 19. All right. That's the only battle that most people know about that they think is going to happen. Uh, Revelation chapter 19. OK. Um, and and I said yesterday that that's not really much of a battle. <laughs> it really isn't not much of a battle at all, because as it pertains to Christ himself. That ain't a battle. Christ is going to come and. He's just going to take care of it. He's just going to take care of things. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Zechariah 14 and then Revelation 19. All right. And uh, now this goes, this goes, uh, this gets a little uh, long here. Okay. Because really what I have to do, I have to go back further um, because the, you got the second coming coming up and I want to go ba back further than that. <coughs> Hmm. Right. Scripture, fret not yourself because of evildoers, because uh, they, they shall soon be cut off. Amen. Evelyn, Evelyn, you, you know, you've been preaching all day today and I just want to find out who are you? <laughs> you've been preaching all day today. Okay. Uh, let's see what I want to do though, because I don't want to get too deep into that because I want to talk about this next battle that's going to come up. And that's the battle of God and make God. There's two Gog and Magog. Okay, I need to I need to pay close attention. Uh, notice, mm, see, I want I, I want to go ahead of myself so bad, but I can't. Uh, and after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, "Hallelujah, salvation and glory." Y'all know the song, and honor and power unto the Lord our God for the Lord my God. Okay, y'all know that song. For true and righteous are his judgment for he has judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth. And oh boy, now we're talking about something here that people think that Revelation is talking about when it says whore, it talks about the whore of Babylon, all right? And, and many people think that it's referring to the Catholic Church. Well, We'll get into that. Uh, I was referring to your vision. Oh, of Chicago, because I saw something similar. Oh, Phyllis. Yes. My vision of Chicago, the destruction, that thing, that thing messed me up. And not that I was afraid because I just don't worry about that stuff. Um, Revelation chapter 16, 
Start at 15, it says, Behold, I come as a thief. Bless he that watches and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together in a place called the, in Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Okay, that's Megiddo. All right, that's in the Jezreel Valley right up in here. Okay, can't see it now. The place is too small even to have so many of these people. Even It's just that little piece of land, all right? The Jezreel Valley. Uh, and uh, the seventh angel poured out his vial into air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. <laughs> you remember when Jesus said, It is finished? Well, right here in Armageddon, he's going to say, It is done. Here's some great notes I have in my, my Bible here. Sometimes I like to read my Bible notes to see what they're saying. Uh, the day of the Lord will come unexpectedly and demands watchfulness on the part of the followers of Christ. It will be an undescribable blessing to those who are spiritually prepared. Man, I hope y'all are prepared. And it says the, the them in verse 16, the them is talking about frogs here. I got to go back up to the sixth vial. All right. And the six angel poured out his vial upon the great rivers Euphrates. There it is. There's Euphrates, y'all. And Iraq, Iraq got across the Euphrates in order to get to Israel. Iran got across the Euphrates in order to get to Israel. If Iraq want to go to the north in order to go through Syria to get to Israel, it's got to cross the Tigris River. Man, come on, y'all. God strategically put those two rivers right there. He had four others. He had two others, the Python and the Sire something. Okay, that those four river, rivers crossed in the Garden of Eden. And that's why so many people think that they, they up in Baghdad and up in here thinking that because, you know, Baghdad and Iraq is the birthplace of civilization. And so they're trying to find the Garden of Eden in this area because the Bible specifically tells us, man, I, I got to go there. I, can I go there? Is, is it okay? Am I wasting y'all's time? If I am, I'll, sh I'll shut this down. <laughs> I'll shut it down. Uh, oh, man, where can I find it? Let's see. So God made man, okay, and God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Uh, let's see. Where is it? Should've, I should have had this already ready. And God's, I uh, give you herbs, bearing seeds, which is upon the face of the earth, uh, fowl, creeping things, herbs, He's told that everything was good on the sixth day. Okay. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay. I'm looking. I am looking for. Maybe y'all can help me out. I'm looking for the, those rivers. Um, and let's see. Y'all will help me find it. Okay. Because those rivers pop up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And the river, there it is. Well, is that what it's saying? And out of the ground made the Lord of God grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight and, and good for the food. The, the tree of life, which is also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Uh, and the river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it parted. It was parted and became into four heads. Here it is right here. Uh, the name of the first is Pison. All right? Uh, that is it which compasses the whole land of Hivala, where there is gold. There's gold in them darn hills, and the gold of that land is good. There is uh, Bedellion and the Onyx Stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon. Uh, the, the same is it that uh, um, encompasses the whole land of Ethiopia down here. All right. Surpasses the land. So that thing could have done. Now, here's the problem. All right. Here's the problem. Yeah. I need me a secretary. OK, here's where the problem is. OK, Gihon. Got that. And then you've got the Pison. OK, that's all in Genesis chapter two. Start at verse 11. Gihon, Ethiopia, okay, the Pison, it doesn't really say, it gives this territory here called Havilah. We don't know where that is, okay? But then also it mentions, let me keep reading, and the name of the third river is 
uh, Hidekel, that is, that is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. Here's Assyria here, and that would be east, okay? Right? So that must be it right there, because my Bible says Hidekel, which is the Tigris River, okay? And the, the fourth river is the Euphrates, all right? And the Lord God took the man and put him in that garden. Okay. All right. You still with me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the the python, the the uh the python is possibly up in this area here. The the Gihon is down here near Ethiopia. All right. If that is the same Ethiopia. Okay. I said that for a reason because that Ethiopia uh is called Cush. All right, this is Cush. All right, got that? Okay, using uh, old Bible terms. My dad made me read the 10 Bible storybooks when I was 10 years old. Wow, Evelyn. Yeah, okay. Uh, are you on live every night tomorrow? Pretty much. If so, I will tune in more frequently. Thank you for this. You're welcome. Okay. All right, so watch this though. A flood came. Remember, the people on the earth was just wicked. They were crazy, okay? And, and then what happened was these, these Nephilim, the Nephilims, these giants, these, uh, the, the sons of God was, these angels was having sex with the son of men. And these giants were formed, okay? Oh man, I gotta do that teaching. All right. And the men was wicked on the earth. I think you have to go to Genesis chapter six or somewhere around it, around there. Okay. All right. I hope I'm not wasting y'all time. The ungodly multitude. And it came to pass when men became multiple on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose and the Lord said, my spirit shall not always thrive with man for that. He also is flesh yet. His days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Uh, there were giants in the earth though. This is the Nephilim. Okay. Um, and on the days and also after that, uh, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And we believe that possibly Goliath, that tall man who fought David, uh, was one of the Nephilims. Okay. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now God had to wipe them out. So he sent the flood. Now those, 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 those giants and those third of the angels that were in heaven and God kicked out, God chained them in hell. Okay. In, or Hades or Sheol. Okay. That's the actual proper term. Hell in King James is a misinterpretation. It's supposed to be Sheol or Hades. That's another story. And you got to go back there to Jude and, uh, and book of Peter, first Peter and second Peter. Well, down here in in Hades, man, it's difficult to teach in time because there's so much and you got to do it in a topical way or you're going to find yourself being all over the place. Okay. So what happens was the flood came. Well, if the flood came, it covered Tigris, it, it covered the Euphrates. Okay. And then it also, uh, covered up the Gihon and the Python. Okay. It covered up those terror, ter those, those, uh, uh, rivers as well. So when the waters receded, you got to go to Genesis chapter nine and, 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 um, Noah gets off the boat with the eight or well, with the seven that was left. What happened to those rivers? Okay. Uh, because some people think that the garden of Eden is in Ethiopia. Some people think that it's somewhere around Egypt. Some people think that the Garden of Eden is in Israel, okay? And then, of course, the others think that the Garden of Eden is in Turkey or, 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 or Iraq, Baghdad, in that area, because they're looking at what the waters, the waters that are left, those other two or three waters are gone, 
well, two are gone. These two are left. And somebody said, God did what, what Congress do, what the Republicans do when they come time for voting. They do, they redraw districts. <laughs> Boy, that just came in my head. They did a redrawing of the districts. And what God did in the Garden of Eden is he not only hid it, he took that tree of life because it's going to pop up again in the end time because we're going to eat from it. Well, where is it? If we can't find the garden, where is the, then where that tree at? God dug that sucker up and he took it to heaven. Oh, yeah, he did. Uh -huh. So he, God, he made this earth. He redraws stuff. <laughs> he replants it. He plucks up. Come on now. He, he, he cursed the fig tree. All right. And he made another one. So he took that tree and well, if we're going to be in heaven eating from the tree of life, he only made but one tree. And if it's in the garden, what did he do with that tree? <sighs> so some people, some scholars believe that he redrew the tigers in the Euphrates, Euphrates. Okay. He had to move it <laughs> because if he hadn't, somebody will, will track it down from what the scriptures say and, and see if they can find the sword that's guarding the, uh, of uh, the Eden. All right. Now I went really left field on y'all. Okay. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is with me doing this kind of teaching. All right. So before I was really interrupted by myself, we was reading about the Armageddon and I was reading in my notes about what the Armageddon, Armageddon mean. So the them in verse 16, these frogs. Okay. Them are the demonic frogs. Armageddon or Armageddon may refer to the Mount of Megiddo, right? There's a movie that was made off of that. At the upper entrance to the plain of Ezdraelon, if that's the word, Israel's chief battlefield in ancient time. Uh, the thought is not necessarily a literal military conflict. That's why I said it ain't even going to be no battle. <laughs> but in any case is a spiritually decisive conflict involving the final overthrow of the enemy by the power of the almighty God. So Armageddon, please, that's just going to be a gathering place where God can put them all together and say, all right, now it's time for me to take care of y'all. All right. Sheol versus Hades versus hell. That is a whole show by itself. Marva. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I know it's hard for the saints to hear me and other and other scholars say that hell is a misinterpretation because when they hear me say that, they say, so you mean to tell me you're saying that there's no hell? I never said that. I'm telling you it's a misinterpretation of what King James says, because when you look in the average King James Bible, the word hell is there and there is a number next to it. Every time you see it, there's a number next to it because the framers or the, the those who try to interpret, okay, not interpret, they try to translate. There it is. And you have to be careful when you're reading different versions of Bibles, whether it's the NLT, the NIV, the KJV, the ESV, any of these translations, okay? You have to be careful that the Bible that you have is not a trans is not an interpretation, but it's a translation and the footnotes and the, and the notes in the back that can be an, uh, an, uh, interpretation. There's a difference between interpretation and translation. For instance, the King James put together by all these scholars, they took the, uh, a, a book prior to King James. Okay. And what they did was, and I did that study already, because King James is not the original Bible and the Bible before that, I don't know if it was the Tisdale or what have you, that one, that's not a, the original, you know, scroll. Okay. But that's the best we had. 1611, they came together uh, and they took the Bible prior to that and they had to make it, put it in English form. And that's why we see, we see thee and thus and thou and hither and thither and betwixt and all these Shakespearean terms. That was the language of that's King's James language. That was Shakespearean 1611 language, right? So what happened was sometimes things get lost in translation. Is it making any sense? So to translate is to take someone who speaks the language and take that language and word for word, translate it to 
what it mean in my language. Well, sometimes when you're trying to translate, you're interpreting as well, right? And that can be dangerous because what you think is truth may not be true for me. It's, that's why we have this mess now with this alternative facts. You see, the fact says that President Barack Obama had more people at the inauguration by the picture that we saw. So what you gonna believe, the pictures or my lying eyes? So we're trying to present to you, we saw your facts is what she said, but we're trying to give you an alternative to your facts. Well, the, an alternative to a fact is a lie. It's like saying, I'm gonna give you a half truth. There's no such thing as a half truth. A half truth is a whole lie, all right? So if I'm going to interpret something, all right, then that means I'm telling you what I believe he's saying. Let me explain it. Or in other words, here's what he's saying. So when you see hell in scripture, in King James, it'll have a number next to it, depending on your Bible, and next to it, it'll say Sheol, okay? Or it'll say Hades. And sometimes it'll say Gehenna, all right? And all of them mean something, okay? And it depends if you're Greek, if you're Hebrew, if you speak Aramaic, all these things make sense, okay? Angela says, are taking about, are talking about hell being interpreted as Sheol. Uh, write that out again, Angela. I think you missed a word. But Sheol, that is the place of the dead, pretty much. Okay? Um, you'd have to go to, you know, the Bible interprets itself. It's just, an, this book is just too too amazing for you not to read it. Y'all are so stuck up on these, these love novels, and I just can't understand how, how Christians will not even, they won't read it because they find the scriptures either too boring or it's not, it doesn't challenge you, but it's a, it, it challenges me. And I consider myself a very intelligent man. <laughs> um, let's see, uh, Jude, um, let's go to Luke chapter, I don't know, chapter 16. And there was a rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's, yeah, it's probably going to say table, I don't know. Let's see here. Rich man's table, yeah. Moreover, the dolls came and licked his sores. Okay. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Okay. The rich man also died and was buried and in hell. Now, I need you to see this. I wish I can show y'all this. I don't know. My video is delayed. All right. But there's a H man. I don't know. There's a, there's a number one next to my Bible. That's hell. And I don't know if y'all can see it. Okay. Uh, but that one simply means that if you go down at the bottom of the Bible, you will see that it means something else. And if I go to 23, it says H-A-D-E-S, Hades, and Hades is Greek. Just like the Pentateuch, the first five books, okay, uh, it, you have to translate it in, in Greek, okay? And then, of course, uh, I, can, I don't want to keep going, so can, I can sidetrack, okay? Okay, the, the Torah, of course, will be Hebrew, the Pentateuch would be Greek, but in the and in, in Hades he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and sees Abraham afar off and Lazarus in, in his bosom. Okay, I would love to do an in-depth study on that by itself because this book, this book and chapter right here tells us what happens when you die. Now, you if you want me to continue, I can, but some other folk are gonna be mad because they want me to get back to the map. But this right here, Luke tells us what happens when we die. But there's some changes that were made since Christ came. All right. So let's get back to the wars here as I shut this down. Because I've been on here just a little too long. What kind do you have? What Bible is that? Yes, thank you, Nat Natalie Tyndale. Tyndall, Tyndall is supposed to be. Thank you. 
Um, uh, well, I don't know whose Bible this is because the Church of God in Christ, uh, you know it's Church of God in Christ because you can see our seal here, um, but this is a, a, a centurion Bible, okay? So, I'm sorry, <laughs> not centurion. <laughs> that would not be a good name. A, a centennial Bible, okay? But it's it's by the Spirit Spirit uh, Spirit Field Life, okay? Spirit Field Life is probably the publisher. Cody just put their seal on it. That's all they did because Cody don't print no Bibles, okay? All right, <clears throat> and that's where that's come from. All right, Hades is the Greek underworld where all the dead go. Thank you, Elder uh, Kevin McGee. And the angels, those fallen angels, and not Lucifer, y'all always say, get back to hell, Satan, where you come from. Satan laughs every time y'all say that. He ain't in hell. He ain't in Hades. He ain't in Gehenna. He ain't in Sheol. He ain't never been there. Now, he eventually will be going there as we keep doing more teaching, but he's never been there. He don't know what it looked like. But the third of the angels know what it looked like. They down there right now, chained up. Man, I can't go in this. I can't go into that teaching. Um, and how do we know? Because when Christ died, the Bible says before he, dis, before he ascended, he descended into the lower parts. Of, I can't. All right, so let's get back to here. Because that, that right there, Vicky, can go, that could go some places, man. That could go some places, right? I, I'm sorry, y'all, but he went down there to Hades to preach the gospel. And when he went down there, he didn't preach that those, those, uh, those spirits, okay? He didn't preach that they would be saved. This was not an evangelical sermon, no. He preached to them a proclamation that... This town ain't the big enough for the both of us. Woo -wee. You see what I'm saying? So the Satan can't be saved. Uh, his, his, his demons can't be saved. I'm sorry. That ain't happening. Uh, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he has reserved an everlasting change under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh and are set forth of an example, suffering the vengeance of the eternal fire. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. And it says, yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses durst not bring against him a railing accusation. He's always accusing us, okay? But said, the Lord rebuke you. So you got to see what happened here when I first read. It says, and the angels which kept not their first estate. That means those Nephilim. That's what those angels came down and started having sex with the children of, of men. They didn't keep their first estate, and God had to do something with them. Well, if you go to 2 Peter 2 and 4, uh, man, why am I doing this? Second Peter, second Peter two and four. Here's what it says. For if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell, there's a number one next to my hell here. Again, that means that is an, Im not, it's an improper interpretation. Okay. And deliver them into unto chains of darkness to be reserved until judgment. They still down there, okay? And spared not the old world, but saved Noah and the eighth person and preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Who? I'm telling y'all, how could you not read this stuff? Who does? Who don't want to read the Bible? I mean, I can go on with this. If the Bible again interprets itself. It keeps talking about what happens to these these spirits down there in hell. Well, I mean, why, what are they doing down there? <laughs> Am I boring, y'all? Lord have mercy. Did this go? I'm about, to, I'm about to feel something. Watch this. 1 Peter chapter 3 and 18. The Bible interprets itself over and over again. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and then there a little. All this is going to make sense. God is a master architect. He says, for Christ has... 
also have once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits, where? In prison. Down there, which sometimes were disobedient, which uh, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared. He keeps going back to the ark. <laughs> Genesis chapter 6, the Nephilim. Okay, so what did Jesus do? They crucified him. He went, they put him in the tomb and he, for three days, went down there to Hades, Sheol, down there at the bottom. And he started preaching to these spirits. And these spirits were like, what, you do? what are you doing? God says, I, I told you. I told you, I told you, my, my anointed cherub, Lucifer, the same thing, and y'all didn't hear me. So he chained them up down there, proclaimed that he is the Lord, and then he ascended up into heaven. Well, what if, here's what he first did. He didn't go up to heaven right away. What he did, he came back on the earth, and these women showed up at the tomb. This ain't no Christmas, I mean, this ain't no Easter sermon, but I got caught in a, in a vortex, y'all. Y'all ever get caught in a vortex teaching? I'm here. I ain't got caught there. You got Schofield? I do have Schofield, uh, Natalie. Mm -hmm. So Christ is up. He's right there. And he shows up with these women down there to clean up the, you know, they do that Jewish thing. And there they are. And they see the who they thought was the gardener. Ooh, it must have been early in the morning because it was dark or something. And they didn't know who he was. And they said, oh, that must, that, is that the Christ? And then they reached out to grab him. He says, touch me not. Don't touch me. For I have not ascended yet. You see, he had just left those prisoners, those spirits in prison. He just preached a sermon and came back up where the, where the tomb was. And they spotted him on his way to heaven. He, ain't, he didn't go there yet. So they, he says, touch me not for I have not ascended. Now we fight over that. Y'all say, he said don't touch because he's, he's pure. He's clean. And, well, how could he be pure and clean? First of all, he just come from hell, number one. Number two, you have to read in two gospels. One gospel says, and they reach and grab his leg. Well, if they had already touched him. So would that make them impure now? No. What he was saying is, don't hold me up. I got to go. Okay. He says, I got to get up to his, I got to go up to heaven. That's, this is another teaching, man. Because you got to see, he is a, he is a sacrificial lamb. He still got blood on his hands. And if you were a Jew, you understood what was getting ready to happen. He had to be the perfect sacrifice. So what did he have to do? Well, in order for him to die on the cross and it, it completely uh, takes away the sin, not cover the sins. See, as long as he had not risen up or as long as he had not went back to heaven, he died, didn't really do anything for anybody. Not yet. His dying didn't do anything. He had to take the blood and do something. Only a Jew would understand that because the blood had to be shed on the altar. Whew. So what he had to do is he had to go up to his father because his father had already prepared a tabernacle in heaven. How do we know? You got to go to the book of Hebrews and the book of Hebrews where God was telling Moses. Now, here's my blueprint. I sent you a blueprint too by Western Union. All right. You got it. OK, look at the blueprint. Now, you see my blueprint. Good. Now, I got a tabernacle in heaven and here's how I want you to build yours down there on the earth. Ooh, he was setting Moses up. Yes, he was, right? Because God prepared that tabernacle in heaven because he knew one day, thousands of years later, that his son was going to be sent down there and lay in the body of a virgin and he's going to die and come back up here because he's got to do this with that blood on the sand. Man, I'm about to catch something up in here and I don't know what it is. He had to make the blood deposit Elder Kevin McGee. Man, why are you preaching my gospel? <laughs> and he had to do this. And then once he did that on the heavenly altar, that's when our sins were wiped away. Lord have mercy. And then he went back down there and showed himself to his disciples. That's why he told, notice what he told the women. He said, go and tell my disciples and Peter, I'll be back. So if he's telling them that, that means he hadn't got to heaven yet. So he went out there, did his little sacrifice, came back down. I, I said a little, I didn't mean that. And he came back down and then he showed himself, we walked through the walls. <laughs> Matter of fact, I think he showed up uh, while they were 
He was hungry. So he got this glorified body. That's the same body that we're going to have, a glorified body, and we're still going to be able to eat. Man. So, yeah, Hades was also considered the Greek god uh, of the dead. Pluto was a Roman counterpart. Wow, Abroni Scott, I didn't know that. Thank you for saying that. Um, all right. The last war. It took me this long to get here. I'm so sorry, y'all, but it seemed like 23 or 4 or 5 of y'all wanted to hang around for an hour and a half. My bad. Okay, uh, there is a special place the blood must go on the altar. Phyllis, why are you preaching my gospel? I can't, I ain't got enough offering to share with you. Deatrice, you got a couple dollars to give to Phyllis? Thanks. Appreciate it. I have walked back into church. Well, <laughs> Melissa, you missed him. You was at church. All right, so this last war is the second battle of Gog and Magog. This is Revelation chapter 20. The first one was the Russia was Russia and its allies. That first Gog and Magog was Russia. And remember, I mentioned these allies of Russia. Well, this one right here would be Russia and the entire world. All the world is going to go against Israel. All of them. This little piece of land right here. Revelation chapter 20. Ooh, I got to have him do this because uh, the church usher didn't give me nothing to drink. My dog Iris, I got to teach her how to go up and go in the refrigerator and, and uh, take care of, of the prophet. Uh, Satan is bound for a thousand years. Man, I don't have, gosh, it's an hour and 26 minutes, y'all. I'm so sorry. Apology not needed. Okay, then I'm not sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Evelyn. She told me I don't have to apologize. Um, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent. It's like, a, <laughs> honest, you old fish-eyed fool, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. There it is. So, huh, to finish this up is, they're going to come against Russia, and his allies first came against the Israel. Didn't work out for them. A billion and a half people died. Then again, another billion and a half people died. They're like, we got to leave this little piece of land alone. The Antichrist is on the scene now. He's really shaking up uh, his little thing. And uh, we got to understand, like yesterday I talked about uh, all these Muslim territories right here. There's a lot of Muslims in all these areas here, but the, the biggest shift of Muslims are over here. And that's not even in the Middle East. That's Indonesia got 200 uh, million people. India, right over here, they got 145 million people. These are Muslims. Pakistan is 140. Bangladesh, okay, that's 115 million. Most of the Muslims in the world live over here. You don't even hear about them. But the Antichrist has got to shake them up too. And then you got United States over here. Well, United States is really over here, closer maybe. I don't know over here, okay? Well, they're on both sides, all right? They, they got to be shucking up. So something's going to happen. China owns the United States. Man, yes, I said it. We indebted to them. We, we get in debt with them as well. Pakistan owns quite a bit of us too. Walk up and down many of our black neighborhoods and you see the Pakistanians. Come on, stop playing with me. Japan is up there as well, all right? And so the United States is going to join forces somewhere, all right? We're going to be either with the, the United Kingdom, we're going to be with China or somebody because we keep getting weaker and weaker and our dollar getting weaker and weaker. And yes, I'm trying to give y'all some prophecy here. Yes, I am. And I don't find, I don't say that I'm, a, I'm an anointed prophet. No, I ain't, I ain't saying all that. All right, so Revelation 20, I sound like Popeye. Go, 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 go. Okay, so the thousand year reign. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their heads or in. OK, this is another thing we're going to be talking about the pre trib mid trib. We're going to talk about the post trib our millennialism and all this stuff. We're going to talk about all that stuff in the next shows. OK, coming up. 
All right, we're going to talk about what happens in the rapture, what's the whole purpose of it, what is Jesus' part in it, okay? And and you have to understand Jewish culture. So anyway, all this stuff is going to happen. They're all going to come against Israel. What's going to happen is God is going to cause these territories to, uh, to be uh, not destroyed. Many of them will be destroyed, but he's going to bless a few of these territories. I think I mentioned some of them in a, in a past show what God said he was going to do uh, with some of these territories here. Um, let's see if I still have that here. Um, it's kind of important that we know this. Ooh, -wee. yeah. Oh, I did a lot. Okay. Uh, Sudan. I talked about Sudan. Um, the word, the word, well, we talked about what God says he's going to do to Sudan. How horrible it will be for the land of the rearing wings, which lies beyond the rivers of Sudan. Okay. It sends messengers by sea in boats made of reeds skimming over the surface of the water. Go swift messengers to a tall and smooth skinned people, tall and smooth skinned people right there. A people who are feared far and near a strong and aggressive nation. That's Sudan, believe it or not, whose land is divided by the rivers. There they are there. Look when someone raises a flag on the mountains. Listen when someone blows a ram's horn. All ye inhabitants of the world who live on the earth, this is what the Lord said to me. I will keep quiet and watch from my dwelling place. Right up there, y'all. My presence will be like scorching heat and sunshine. He going to wipe them out. They're going to be like a heap. <laughs> Sudan, keep your eyes on that in, in Bible prophecy or on your news. Okay? God ain't playing. Uh, the, that land over here called Iraq, that little plain land that's divided by the Tigris and Euphrates. I talked about this before. In that day, there will be a highway from Egypt mm -hmm, to Assyria, right up in here, Turkey area here. The Assyrians will go to Egypt and Egypt to Assyria. He's going to make a highway. Look like it's going to be right through Jerusalem, right through Israel. Okay, a highway. All right. And that day, Israel will be third along with Egypt and then Assyria, a blessing on the earth. Oh, God will bless them people. The Lord Almighty will bless them saying, blessed be Egypt, my people. Is uh, Assyria my handiwork and Israel my inheritance? That's out of Isaiah chapter 19 and 23. God's going to bless Egypt. I don't care what you say. I don't care if Gaddafi and all these other offies come and act a fool with the, the Muslims. This and Donald Trump could put a Muslim ban on Assyria if he want to in Egypt. And, and it don't matter. God says, I got to bless him. He's going to build a highway here. God's going to come over here to Iraq. He wants them people to be able to come over here and try to destroy Israel. He's going to dry up the Euphrates River, going to dry that sucker up, and they're going to be able to walk over there on dry land like he did the children of Israel and come over here to overtake Israel. And, oh, he's going to gather them up in the Megiddo, the Jezreel area there, and he's going to say, all right, I'm glad y'all came to the meeting. I got to destroy somebody up in here. Mm -hmm. And we read that in Zechariah chapter 14. Okay. Woo -wee. China purchased most of the USA debt from USA allies. Sure did. Sure did. And still buying stuff. Uh-huh. All right. What, what God says, he talked about Libya. We talked about this. God is talking about Yemen. Okay. We did that show already. Okay. So what's going to happen is God is going to chain Lucifer or Satan. Okay. He's going to chain Satan up and put him in the bottomless pit and leave him there for a thousand years. And when Christ come down with all of us, okay, these territories here, all right, because what God got to do is he's got to recreate this earth. He's got to make a new heaven and a new earth. And this earth got to burn up, but he ain't ready for the burning yet. That ain't going to happen yet because Satan is still at the bottom of his pit. So this portion here, um, this portion here, let's, ex let's, uh, let's just assume that the Indian Ocean is... <laughs> Is uh, Hades okay? Well, you got what's called Hades. Y'all say hell, okay? Hell, or uh, let's say the lake of fire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
All right, we talked about that. And what is a lake of fire? Woo-wee. That's that's God. That's God. He's a consuming fire. See, when we get to heaven, all right, because there is a heaven up here that where we'll be for seven years. We up there singing holy, holy, holy. We're eating and having a great time at the, at the marriage supper of the Lamb, okay? But then God's going to have us all come back down to this territory right here, great Jerusalem, the Mount of Olives, where Jesus' feet going to hit that, and it's going to divide the mount from east to the west. We're going to be with him right there. And then all these territories who came against Israel, God is going to wipe them out, the people. And then there are others who are going to be left who did not take the mark of the beast. They're going to be here. And then God's going to save them. All right. So y'all saying, y'all stop telling the lie to people that after the rapture come, that's it. There's no more chance for you. That is a bold faced lie. And you can't find that nowhere in scripture. I've been hearing that teaching all my life and got afraid. That made me afraid to live a sinful life because I was afraid. Now, I didn't want to not live a sinful life because y'all made me afraid. I wanted to not live a sinful life because I love God. You see, there is a difference, y'all. Did that just make any sense? Go back to my statement, Walter. What statement? What statement? Since you jump in all over the place, <laughs> deal with when the first resurrection actually ends in Revelation and who needs to be saved after the millennium. What are you saying? You, I can't. Because then that's going to... I've already touched too much on Revelation. Well, I, let me go this. <laughs> Dr. Kevin McGee. I can't do this. Um, uh, he, he, Lord have mercy. Let me do this. <laughs> Hoo wee. Uh, I just don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. If he, here's what I like about Revelation. The first three chapters. Okay. Talking to the churches, the seven churches, all right, of Asia Minor, all right. Some of y'all belong to that church, all right. Uh, the, the Ephesus and the Church of Samaria and Pergamos and the, the Ty Tyra and of course Philadelphia, Laodicea and the Sardis or what have you. And then what happens is, after chapter three, the church is gone. They're gone. Rapture happens. It says here, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Because you have kept, this is the church of Philadelphia, which I'm a part of, okay? Because you have kept, all right, you heard the word, I will keep you from the hour of temptation. That means the hour of temptation is the Antichrist coming on the scene and then the tribulation comes, okay, after he signed his peace treaty. God says, I'm going to keep you from that. Now, this is the strong scripture other than uh, uh, next to others that I could prove where I believe in the pre-trib, okay, all right? Because here's some Greek words that's used. The, the Greek word is ek, which means out of. Uh, if if he had let us go through the tribulation, then the Bible would have used the word dia, D-I-A, which means preserved through, all right? Because some people use the Noah on the boat. You see, the flood came and God put them on the boat, so they felt the turbulence, but God preserved them through the flood. That's dia. But if God really wanted to do something, he could have flooded the earth and, and took no, and the eight up like Ezekiel. He could have took them up like Enoch if he wanted to, but he didn't do that. He preserved them. But in Revelation 3, he's going to take us out or ek. That means we won't see the tribulation. Now, some people are going to fight me on that, okay? But um, I don't care, <laughs> okay? So, so what happens here is... Uh, God takes Satan, chains him up. The people who are still on the earth will be calling out on the name of the Lord and the Lord will save them, all right? Now, there's going to be an unfortunate thing here because we have glorified bodies. We're already in heaven already. Our bodies have changed. But these people will have these carnal bodies, all right? And they'll still be having babies. You see? see what I'm saying? See, you got to understand, in the, uh, when the rapture comes, there are people going to be left behind. We keep hearing that term, left behind. And then scripture alludes to if the very, if the, it's going to talk about sending a delusion to the very elect, okay? And some people will begin to believe a lie. 
and there's some people going to buy and sell and get the mark and what others are going to be like, mm -mm, I don't want it. I already know the scriptures. Those are the ones that are going to be left behind. It's going to be a lot of pastors, a lot of elders, a lot of prophets going to be left behind, uh, e evangelicals, a lot of teachers going to be left behind, a lot of nurses going to be left behind, a lot of deacons going to be left behind. All right, a lot of the so-called Christians are going to be left behind. Trust me on that. They're going to be left behind. Okay, and now, because now they know the truth, all right, now they got to go through this tribulation, and unfortunately, they got to be beheaded. That's just the way it is, because the Antichrist got to set this system up. And who beheads today? Not the United States. Matter of fact, we got rid of pretty much the death. How many people you know dies when they get on the death penalty? The, the death, uh, whatever they call it, I think. Hardly nobody. They, they, give, they give them the death penalty, and those people die in, on, on, uh, on that row, death row. They don't, even, they don't even kill them. It takes them years before they stick somebody with the, with the poison. All right? So we don't behead. The Muslims do. That's further proof to y'all that the Antichrist ain't coming from the West. Because we don't have that system unless we join forces with someone and we began to implement beheadings. Other than that, the Antichrist or our president wouldn't go up with that. All right? It would have to be someone from these areas here who that's what they do. They believe in chopping off stuff and they put it right there on in the, in the town square for everybody to see. That's why you don't see money killing to would have many murders and robberies and all, all these crimes happening in many of these territories because they will put you right there on front street says, all right, I want y'all all to see what not to do. Chop off his head. You see what I'm saying? Now, I'm not saying implement this in America, but you, they ain't got no problems with guns and all that over there in some places like that, okay? So, uh, so what's going to happen is uh, the, the people are going to have to be beheaded who are left behind. And then that, right at that three and a half years, there's going to be like a second rapture, a calling up. All right, y'all like, where that at? That's the revelation. That's, that's next time, okay? Well, now Christ comes back. See, there's a second coming. The rapture is not the second coming because Christ don't come here. We meet him up there. So that's not the second coming. But when the second coming do happen, these people are going to be saved, all right? And then God's going to put us in the millennium, in the kingdom, and we're going to be sitting in Jerusalem, and there's going to be Christ, and there's going to be King David sitting right there, right? And God's going to have all these people, all the Egyptians, the Assyrians, okay? He's going, to, he's going to have these people, these Muslims and all these other people who got converted, all right? They're going to have to come to Jerusalem uh, uh, every now and then to worship God. And if they don't do it, God says, I'm going to have to punish them. All right? That, that ain't us. We're the ones going to be judging these people. All right? So they're going to be having babies. So how do we know? It's in Scripture. And then Satan's down there. A thousand years is getting ready to be over. And these babies are going to start acting a fool because they got bodies like we do right now. And there's nothing good, new, or nothing good in the flesh. So they're going to be sinning in this Holy Jerusalem in the millennium. Yes, y'all never heard this before. I know you haven't. They will be delivering, they will be leaving alternative facts, the ones that are left behind. Yes, they will be. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, it is. Thank you, Vicky. Man is worth living this kind of life. Yes, okay. And so these people are going to be having babies. The babies are going to be growing. They're going to be, they're going to be, they're going to be killing. Still, they're going to be acting a fool while Christ is on the earth. Why? Because Satan is down here. He ain't been destroyed. He's, he's right there. Thousand, thousand year reign comes. And I just read to you where the Bible says, then his chains will be loosened. And Satan will be loosed to come back up on the earth and wreak havoc one more time. And Christ is going to have the great white throne judgment. That ain't for y'all. We had our judgment. But the great white throne judgment is... Satan not only down there, but all those people who decided, Uncle Poopoo, who decided, I don't, uh, Jesus who? No, I ain't doing it. It ain't about church. It ain't about him going to church. It's about his relationship with Christ. He's like, I, I don't, I, I'll do it later. All right. So Uncle Poopoo, Auntie Mary down there, okay, your, your friend, your boyfriend, your wife, your husband, many of them decided who they didn't want to, they down there in hell, Haiti, Sheol, right, with, chained up with those in prison, Okay. 
it's a it's a it's a hot situation down there and what's going to happen is the most embarrassing thing i can ever think of is they inhale and and right after the thousand year reign when when satan is loose christ is going to summons them out of hell Ooh, this is messed up y'all mm -mm. he gonna summons them out of hell into the great white throne judgment he gonna open the book and say hmm here's your punishment and you know what their punishment is, depending on what their deeds were, he gonna throw them right back down there. But this time, hell where they are, he gonna take all those people and Satan and hell, the entire domain of hell, and throw it in what's called the lake of fire. And they're gonna burn forever and ever and ever. And then after the millennium reign, we move into what's called eternity. Okay. I mean, that's, that's it in a nutshell, but there's a whole lot more. Okay. It's a whole lot more, Melissa. It's a whole lot more. I just, I need to find those three heavens. Y'all, um, let me find that out. <laughs> uh, because before y'all go, let me find those three heavens. Um, because it, it kept bothering me while I was teaching. I need to know what that is. I, I, I remember the names, the degrees of heavens. Um, what is it called? Um, give me a minute here. I know what they are. Oh, I know what they are. Oh, I know what they are. And they're in, they're in the um, King James Bible, actually. There it is. Thank you, God. Uh, celestial, terrestrial, and telestial. Okay. Now the Mormons teach this. We don't. We don't really teach this. Okay. But this is what they teach, and is actually in our scriptures. It's just when you look at the King James version, they have a different name. So there are three heavens. The celestial, of course, is the um, is the is the sky, which you see. The terrestrial, that's what E.T. comes from, that's what that word comes from. That's the universe, and then telestial, that's the third heavens. Uh, and that's what they teach. And it's, um, again, it's in scripture. Uh, I was just looking at it the other day, actually. Uh, the first Corinthians 15? Yeah, I think that might be it. First Corinthians 15, maybe. Hmm, first Corinthians. Um, 15 and I don't know 41 <clears throat> um, uh, I don't know yes For, uh, all flesh is not the same flesh but there is one kind of flesh of man and other flesh of beast and other of fishes and other of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. And there is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars for one star differs from another star in glory. And there it is right there. Now, now, my King James Bible uses the word heavenlies for celestial and for terrestrial. Uh, what does it use? Earthly. Yeah, terrestrial. There it is. I said it backwards. Um, terrestrial is. Um, we have a we have two types of radio stations. We have Internet radio and then we have what's called terrestrial radio. And terrestrial simply means the ground. <laughs> That's really what it is. Okay. All right. Uh, which book? Uh, what, what question? What are you asking me here? Daniel or Ezekiel? I'm not. I'm not. I don't know what you're talking about here, Phyllis. Which which book is what? I get some water. Well, take a break. I will eat a salad. A salad? No, nah, I'm not a big salad eater. I'm gonna just take some water. Uh, and did I miss anybody else's comments since you on? on the Enoch and Elijah, the two witnesses that God sent down to fight. Ooh, Vicky, you, you, uh, I can't go into this. We are, I just can't go into that. But these are the players in the end time. Remember when I mentioned these guys here? 
Ooh. One of these guys is going to be like Christ. He going to be wounded down the street. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, one of um um some people believe that um two men will come back and they'll be the witness for God. And remember I told y'all last time that God's it takes two people to establish a thing, a matter, or to be a witness. God uses, he always uses two people, two. When angels come, they come in twos a lot of times. Um, when at the tomb of Christ, two angels showed up. When Christ was getting ready to go up and, he, and the two angels says, why are you sitting here gazing? That same one going up is coming down. Well, in Revelation, two men will show up. Uh, Elijah is one of them. We do know this. Uh, and some people believe that it is Enoch, but scholars fight because they believe that it, Moses is the other one. Some say Enoch, and some Enoch, and some says Moses, and and they fight over this. And I know why, because some people think that Moses Moses died and God hit the body, the bones, or what have you, and what have you. But he still died. And they look at some of the works that you see in history that that Moses did. And we look at Revelation, it seems like that's that's God will use Moses to do those same things. I get that. But the reason why, why people lean on Enoch, because Enoch walked with God and then he was not for God took him. So it is appointed once that man would die. And they said that Enoch never, never, he never died. And so this is, uh, and of course, he also took Elijah. So that's why we believe that those those two men, because they didn't die, they have to. Yeah. All right. If, if that's making any sense, some believe it will be Enoch and Elijah. Right. And many of them believe it will be Moses. But uh, I, I tend to sometimes debunk the Moses thing because, again, he did die uh, because you, I just read in Jude where they contended for the bones <laughs> of Moses. So if there are any bones, apparently he died. Okay, so I see the the, um, the discussion uh, or the uh, the division among the scholars. I do see that. But most people say Enoch and Elijah, of course. We all know it's Elijah. We all know that. Um, you look at Malachi. And I know every time we read Malachi, we always think about tithes. But there's more in Malachi than y'all giving a tithe. Trust me on that. Because Elijah... His name pops up in Malachi as well. Okay. Um, okay. I think I better stop now. It's 11 o'clock in the p.m. here in Chicago. And I just wanted to take y'all through the things that I did promise you. The revelation is going to take a long time. All right. It's going to take some time to really study it. And I got to get back on my generational wealth for African-Americans uh, classes. So I'm going to be doing two videos a day if I can. Uh, during the morning, we'll be talking about the uh the generational wealth classes and then at night we'll do more religious studies okay uh god told joshua that his servant moses was dead thank you other kevin mcgee there it is that man died <laughs> he'd be dead it you know unless god uh, you know resurrect him like he did christ other than that he gone okay yeah so um we'll do finances during the day and then we'll do uh, the um we'll do the um we'll do the bible study at night all right because i got to get through revelation as much as possible so all i have to do is i'll do i'll do one two and three and maybe four on day one i could just go through those real fast it wouldn't take me a day to do each one of them but you got to get it but there's so many things about in time but i think what i want to do first though i want to teach y'all on what happens at the rapture because we got to talk about uh, uh, the book of Thessalonians. We got to talk about First Corinthians. Okay, we got to talk about the rapture and parts of Revelation on what happens. We got to go back to the book of Luke, chapter sixteen, find what happens with the rich man and Lazarus. Okay, and if we put all that together, it will make sense of the rapture. And then the next day, or maybe after that, then we can go back to Revelation chapter one and see what we can do. All right, that's the map. You guys got it on your phones. You can take pictures of it, or you don't need that. All you gotta do is go on Google and type in the Middle Eastern maps, and this is this is it here. There's other territories that I didn't put here because 
Look at look at Africa. It's empty. <laughs> it's all this stuff down here that, um, not that they're insignificant because you don't see them in Scripture, but these these territories are probably going to join forces with these other uh, Muslim territories uh, and other little places that you don't see. I mean, I even put France up here. Here's Spain. Here's where some people think that the Antichrist will come from. Here in Spain. Uh, pay attention to the Mediterranean Sea. Right? It's, been, it's been there forever. Here's Morocco. Okay, I put them there because they have significance, especially in the, in world history and world wars. Italy, we got to thank these territories, our allies. We have to thank them for us to even have the United States. When the uh, we expanded uh, westward through that great purchase from President, uh, who was it, Andrew Johnson or Jackson, one of those two, um, the the Louisiana Purchase almost doubled the United States. Well, guess who owned it? <laughs> we didn't. All right, you got France and you got Italy. Okay, you got Spain. You know who comes from Spain. And then, of course, you know, over in uh, Mexico, you know, look at the areas over there in California, the West Coast. Okay, so we need to thank uh, some of these territories for... And then the United States got other territories that's not a part of the 50 states. And that's another thing. So geography is great. If you can just get an understanding of what just this portion here, you'll know Bible prophecy like that within no time. Get you some study helps. This is a great book called The Atlas of Jewish Civilization, 400 Years of History. It's a great study book on maps. I have several books. Um, another one here is um, the Rose Book of Bible and Christian History Timeline, more than 6,000 years of at a glance, okay? This is a great book here. It's real easy because it folds out. It's a 20-foot timeline, okay? And it just helps you with what happened at the beginning. It gives the children. It gives the kings, okay? Just a, I feel like I'm, I'm at a, a, a grammar school. I say, uh, children, <laughs> this is romper room, okay? And it gives wonderful pictures because some of y'all like pictures, okay? And just good history and takes you through uh, the before before the common era and, and what have you. So, yeah, these books are really good. When you need something really fast, real quick, that's another great book there. And I have several other um, uh, Jewish customs in my library over there, okay? I'll show you guys that stuff when I get a chance. All right. I appreciate you too, Lady Rochelle. Thank you. Uh, okay, look at your comments. Okay, let me see what you got here. I'm looking at my comments. Um, Daniel 70 Weeks, Elder Kevin McGee. I know. I need to have you here for that so that you can teach it. Elder Kevin McGee is an amazing teacher. He always, he would test me and my brother Rodney. I think my brother Rodney is one of the greatest teachers that I do know, my own f flesh and blood, Rodney Jones. Uh, and Elder Kevin McGee, I used to every day almost on Facebook, the early days of Facebook, he said, riddle me this. And he would throw out one of those uh, uh, questions and we'd be, we'd have our faces in the books trying to figure out what is the elder Kevin McGee, what's the answer? Because he's going to want to know. And then when we come up with the answer, he's going to put a spin on it. That man right there, I think is, and he's one of the great teachers that we have here today. He's an unsung hero. Y'all get to know the elder Kevin McGee. Uh, Vicki Heckert, where he says, okay, everybody's standing. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for your servant. Amen. Sir Walter Jones, cover him with a hedge of protection in Jesus' name. Thank you for that. Amen. I received that. A blessing, sir. Thank you. Lamaria. You know Lamaria. You know I love you and your whole family. You know that, right? Okay. Um, you're about to teach another lesson. Yeah, I know. Kevin McGee's doing this. She got me, he got me talking. May the Lord watch. Amen. Y'all got to go to bed. I think that's what y'all trying to say. Study to show you some proof. <laughs> that's what y'all trying to say. Brett Jones, we need to go to bed. It's a work night. All right. See y'all tomorrow during the day. We'll talk about branding and how to set up your business. Let's talk about that tomorrow during the day. How to set up your business, whether you want to do an LLC or whether you want to incorporate or whether you want to be a sole proprietorship. Uh, we'll talk about some branding in there and how to get all that stuff set up. Let's talk about that tomorrow. Okay, God, we thank you for your presence, your blessings. Uh, we honor you. We thank you for the scriptures. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for giving us eyes to see what's going on in the lands that you have set forth before us and the children of Israel. God, protect that land. Okay, you told us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. 
And you said for us to bless Abraham, if we, if we bless them, you'll bless us. If we, if we curse them, you will curse us. So I pray for our president, Donald Trump, that he use wisdom, touch his mind, give him a humble heart, God. And if he's the man for the job, in spite of what we may say we don't like about him, if you put him there, then God, then we must honor him and we must see to that he do your bidding, God. And help us, give us the understanding of what's going on in our own governments. Give us the wisdom when we go down there to the polls and pull those levers and write in this and that. God, give us the wisdom. Use the Holy Ghost, God, through us. But that we receive, God, the wisdom to know what to do. Help us, God. And develop us into rightful people that we might go out there and win the lost at any cost. We ask this in your son Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. I thank God for all these people who came on here those of you who are on Facebook Live, God bless you. The rest of you will come in tonight and tomorrow, and we'll have a few hundred, hundred people will come, and I'm going to I speak life over all of the few hundreds who are going to join Facebook Live right after this. Those of you who are on YouTube, all right, go down there and hit, the, uh, hit that button. Subscribe. There's one over there, I think, and there's one down here. I, I don't know. Hit the subscribe button, and then do me a favor. Hit the comments. Start commenting on YouTube. Many of you are, are, are doing it. Thank God because my numbers are really high. They've been getting high lately. So go ahead and co comment. I try to answer all comments, okay? And I interact with people on social media. Those of you on Twitter, same with you on Instagram. I make sure that I try and respond to your messages, even your private messages. Some have been very uh, kind of risque because right? I've been getting cussed out lately, but that's all right. I'd rather get persecuted for Christ's sake than anything else, all right? So keep the comments coming, those of you on YouTube. Go to bed, everybody. Get some good rest, and we'll see you tomorrow. God blessings to you. I got to go over here and shut this off. Uh, my dog, Iris, don't know how to work the phone, okay? So I have to do it myself. Lazy dog. I just don't understand. All she do is eat my food, but she don't know how to hit a button. I just don't understand what's wrong with my wrong with the feline. No, a feline's a cat, right? Okay, why am I talking into this mic and people can hear me? Let me just shut the mic off.